Well, hello, all. Hello. Hi, Fran. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right, that was here. <laughs> I, I hear you now. <laughs> I think they heard you on Venus, actually. But okay. All right. Wonderful. So as others, um, I understand, are coming in, we can uh, begin by, um, first of all, me asking Joseph, because I think there were some people that are new to these yeah. gatherings. Have you talked with them? Has is yeah, everyone yeah. known I've, what I've we're doing? I've mentioned the um, basics of it. Just uh, be in a quiet place and uh, don't put your sp- phone on speakerphone because it'll echo throughout the call. And uh, that's about it. You know. Okay. So, um, okay. Well, I am delighted that we're all here. Those of you who have been with us before and you knew Folks have joined in. That's that's delightful. What these calls are designed to do, or created for, is to bring us together. We are already connected. We are already one. And now it is actively participating in bringing all that each of us is together to help what's going on in the world today and beyond. We see the physical manifestations of what's gone out of an intact state at the energetic. We see that. We have seen, uh, and Joseph, you can mute the phones if you would. Uh, we see that. We see that manifestation. We also see that without putting the labels of good or bad, we look at it as what is intact, what is not intact. So we can see that as there are aspects of this energetic cloth that we call the kepacha, that is the, the, for you who are new, the kepacha in the Quechua language of Peru is what we know to be the energetic realm that surrounds the Pachamama or the Mother Earth. It not only surrounds, it is, it is within and without at once. We're going to go a little bit back to Energetics 101. For those of you who have been here before and have heard this, well, it, for all of us, Sometimes it helps to hear what we've already known again because we can hear it with new ears or different ears. The energetic is the raw stuff of creation. So we know that everything that happens is first comes to be made manifest at the energetic through the intensity of the intent that energetic manifestation can and does become physical. So we can look at that and knowing that all that happens starts at the energetic where with just merely a a change of instinct, a change of Even if it gets to thought, a change of thought, a change of feeling, a change of sense, just something which seems to be as trivial or as small as that can make all the difference in the world. Some of you who have been working for a while or who are energy workers already know about this. For those of you who are are beginning to understand that, perhaps in your own life, just you have come to know that just by taking yourself out of old patterns of thought or the way you, what you do in the world by changing that and bringing it into a a more simple, higher state that has changed things in your life and your engagements not only with others but with yourself. Now let's take that further, folks. How about if all together we, through the one that we are, 
not as you would have it or I would have it or any one individual would have it, but through one intent, clear this cloth of creation, this energetic, so that the ripples that are happening that bring, bring what physically manifests out of an intact state, we could bring that into an intact state. How would that be, folks? Well, you know something? We've done this before, and let me tell you something. The physical results of that have been, by every bit of the word miracle, it has been. I've used this before. I've said this to you before, but I will use, say this again. At one point when we did this, Afghanistan, and the first time for years, let the Red Cross in. There were changes in the, Le- in the Lebanon polit- policies. That's how real it is. It's not because any of us personally would have it to be so, but, be- but because we energetically, we know what we know, because we are one and know that it serves all. And that's how real it is, folks. And that every one of you have come to gather on Monday nights now, you who are new, you who have already come, and those who will be coming, you know this. Intuitively, instinctually, you know this. That's why you're here. You perceived it and you want to do this. Every one of us have felt what's happened. Whether you knew it or not, you felt it. And some who are more have been working consciously longer in energy worker and some some high path of light will know that. Those who have not yet but are coming to know, instinctually you know. So, So together... What we can do, we are going to journey because every time we meet, there will be a journey. One is to go to the Kepacha. And this is for those of you who have traveled before. You have seen this, but in every time has no meaning, but it's the only word we can use. In every moment, there is a change. And in that, we can see what has perceived. And that's what we're going to do when we journey. And we're going to have a look at what this, what we call the cloth of creation, the energetic. Have a look at that, that cloth. See, perceive its colors, its weaves, where it is smooth and weaving, or I should say weaving smoothly, and where it is not. Well, together, we can do this. And the wonderful, magnificent, extraordinary part of this is we're not alone. There are other people like ourselves throughout this whole world who are doing the same thing and very likely in this moment. And that is why we know we're one. You know, it can be said that people from all over the world, well before there was ever uh, travel to that could go to other countries or even when they way, way back before others knew that there were other countries. When you look back into those teachings, you're going to find a single thread that runs through that, that we all knew the same thing. And that is, among many of that, if the physical is gone, what's left is pure energy. That's why we're one. And that's why we all know what we do. So through that, I'm going to ask you, um, in, a, in a moment or so, Joseph, I'll tell you when, you're going to unmute the phones and we're going to ask the folks who are, no, who are new and those who have been with us before <clears throat> uh, to just perhaps say a first name and what brought you here, what, 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 what brought you here. And those of you who have been with us before, what you have come to know since we first began meeting. And I'm going to ask you to keep it brief because we're going to have a number of people here who would like to speak. So, Joseph, if you can open the phones for a few minutes and uh, we will 
get on. Go ahead. All right. We're open. Okay. So any of you who are with us, uh, if you would just say your name and briefly say what has brought you here, and if you've been here before, what you have come to know since we first meeting. Anybody? Hi, my name is Salim. I've been on the conference call previously and uh, just got a better grasp of how the spirit uh, works and how it, um, how, it can, how it can properly guide me. And I've come here for more structure with that. And I am receiving it. Wonderful. Anyone else? Loretta. Loretta, yes. I've been here before. And uh, I come back because things seem to be shifting in my life. And it's Wonderful. subtle, but noticeable and significant. Wonderful. Delighted to have you with us again. Thank you. How about the rest of you? Hi, this is Cindy, and I'm here out of curiosity. Well, all right. Wonderful. Okay. Hey, it's Joseph. Uh, you know, I've been doing work off and on with Fran for about eight, nine years or something like that. And, uh, you know, as far as what I've got from this work, you know, it's just uh, it's given me a lot of good ideas. So we've got a lot of good things to work with, a lot of good things that uh, I'm working on, and a lot of good ideas. So that's why I'm here. Okay. Anybody else? Hi, my name is Linda Salvador, and I've been on this journey for some years now since I first met Fran, and um, I first came because of the fact that I was led, and um, I want to continue to pass on something that I made an agreement a long time ago, and I just want to be here to serve and, and, and be a part of this, this, this journey. Wonderful. Anybody else? Okay. And what we're going to do is let me ask you, those of you who were with us last week and those of you who are new, um, last week we went on a journey so that you could merge once again with your primal self. The primal self is who and what you really are, beyond the human body, beyond the human construct, the higher perceptual primal self, the one that helps you sniff life out, the instinct, the knowing, without word, without thought, just simply yes or no. So I'm going to ask you, you who have traveled that last week, how was that for you this week? And it is possible that we can travel again uh, so your primal self can guide you even more. How was that for anyone last week? It was great. It was fantastic. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. Then, Joseph, what I'm going to ask you to do is to mute the phones once more. Let me know when it is so. All is right. It so? Yep. Okay. What we're going to do, folks, is we're going to take a, a journey now, and we're going to have a look at the Cape Pacha. And in this, through your primal sense, through your primal self, through your higher perceptual 
self, and this is known by many names. This is known as higher self. This is known as spirit, spirit within. Whatever word it is that you use, it is the same thing, you know. Whatever word it is, it is, it is pure light, the light within you, the guiding force of light that is the force of life within you. So with this, we are going to travel. And we're going to have a look at the Kepacha. Now this is something where when you see that this is the energetic grid, it may appear as energetic rivers, the flow of it, as it is as it is moving perceive and in the way that one perceives it can be seen it can be felt it can be you can sense it through color sound texture weight and feel many different ways so however it is for you that is the way that you sense There's no right or wrong about it because some person can do it in this way and you don't. doesn't mean that you're doing it wrong. You're not doing it wrong. You're doing it the way that you know naturally to do it. This is a very important thing for you to know. So we're going to have this journey now. So I'm going to ask all of you to center and ground. And in this way, You are in a center of stillness, and in that center of stillness, we will travel. Be guided by what it is that you know, not through the stories, not through the beliefs, just what you know instinctually, perceptually, intuitively. Know what you know. As we are on the Pachamama, the Mother Earth, knowing that she is our anchor, knowing that she keeps us safe and secure, our body is safe and secure. Leaving behind the tensions of the everyday life, whatever it is that is in the everyday life, it will be there when you return. Leave it behind as begins, as we begin to soar now, we begin to fly. We call on star condor and our primal cells to help us, to guide us, as we go beyond the earth, above her land, and above her waters, above her mountains. As we glide through her skies, past the clouds, into the pure, pure energetic itself. Let us just glide here, float here for a moment, free of all that fetters us, knowing that our physical bodies await us when we return. Primal self, sniffing, seeing, 
And as we soar high now, we look down as we are sheltered and are held by the wings of star condors. We see this Kepacha, this glowing grid of the energetic. These energetic rivers flowing. Let us watch that. Let us perceive it. Where does it run freely? No impediment. Where does it not? Look at its colors. Perceive its color, its scent. However it is that you will perceive it. Where is it bright? Where is it not? Perceive through the eyes of your primal self, your primal senses. Without engagement, we are one. Perceive now. Now together, with gratitude and gifts and offerings to Scar Star Condor. We return back to the Pachamama, past the clouds through her skies, past her mountains, back to where your physical body is. Return now into your current physical body, fully centered and grounded, fully here, completely here, in the present, in your current body, in this place and time. Feeling the Pachamama hold you, her strength, holding you as you feel it, her warmth, her strength, her love, flowing through your energetic body as your warmth and strength and love flows to her, for we are one. Fully return now to your current physical body in this time and place. Joseph. Yep. You can open the phone. All right. Hey, folks. Will we be in your physical bodies now? and speak of what you have perceived. Those of you who are new and those of you who have been with us before, if you see anything that has changed or moved, any of you, then we do encourage you to talk. For we know that by keeping yourself quiet and within, then that that guidance that has come through and to you as the vessel of light stays within you and cannot be shared and does not then be in service to others. So what have you come to know now? This is Loretta. Mm -hmm. Um, As I was journeying with um, with the condor that you mentioned and my power animal is a winged one, so I asked him to come with me. And um, as we were gliding there, at your suggestion, you said something about look for where it's dark and light. And I perceived that the 
Kepacha was made up of energy projected from all living beings on earth shooting up and where there was positive energy from the people and the plants and everything living it was light and beautiful and bright and where there were beings that hold negativity it was dark but the light was far outnumbered the dark and it wasn't huge huge areas of dark it was just sort of pinpoints from every living creature so that even the darkness was just a pinpoint among the the light umbrella created by this energy coming from uh, the earth yes Adi means yes in Quechua beautiful yes We'll speak more about that, but how about the rest of you? Yes, thank you, Loretta. Thank you. About the rest of you. Um, This is Cindy, and I saw a blue and gold, mostly blue concentric lines um, around the outside of the earth, and then... Um, To my surprise, it seemed like there were sparkles of uh, blue and gold that were almost like little tiny fireworks, um, especially gold in the middle, and it seemed like the dark part was at the very top center of the earth. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wonderful that you perceive that. Yes. How about the rest of you? Anything before we go on? This is Salim. I, um, as a, my uh, sights this evening were very light, a lot of light, um, a lot of water, and I actually felt like I was seeing more through the eye of the primal self as opposed to anything else um, as I did before. There was no darkness at all at this time for me. Wonderful. How about the rest of you before we go on? Anyone? This is Linda Salvador. I saw uh, like a big round circle and in the middle was, was kind of dark, but all around the white circle all around it was white. It was a white glow that was shooting in towards it. Yes. Yes. Wonderful. So it kept it kept moving. It kept moving, but it kept yes. I kept seeing it, you know, like vibrating in towards that darkness. Okay. Well done. Okay. When, when you you understand that the energetic is the the raw stuff of creation, and that it is, as we're calling it, the cloth of creation, and why we use the analogy of it being a cloth, is that is that that's the the most simple way for people to for you to come to understand that this this is actually the energetic does move it is it is only through any kind of a construct which is could be as simple as a simple thought a simple feeling that is it will be made manifest so what what you were saying before, Loretta, when you said that you saw that it was the the, the people and and all of that that was was creating this energy. Yes, this is what's manifesting. Yes, 
you see so and yeah the 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 wonderful thing the, what we do know is the light the light shines on all so where there is that darkness light shines and this is why we know by a simple change of thought and as we come together in one thought it does not take away free will that does not take away that everyone has to like the same thing certainly not what it means is that you are free to live your life as you will but the intent is one to do no harm and as said in some circles and it is a beautiful way to express it perfect love perfect trust these are not just wonderful concepts these are real and this is what we are weaving into the energetic this is what we're weaving into the cloth of creation it just if you can mute the lines so what i'm saying what i'm saying is that it came to me after last week is to give each and all of us an a tool if you will or something that can help you to focus intent you see we who are of the light the vessels of light the guards of light the guides of light there are times we must be warriors of light as is true but we do know that we do no harm so what can we do to help those who want to do harm what do we want to do about the people that that in, embrace those things and that's what they want we know that they are desperately defending some personal constructs so that their way is the only way we don't seek to destroy what we seek to do is to bring enlightenment so on all that all all where there was anything dim or dark that was not flowing in the light through the kepacha we can send enlightenment not as i would have it or you would have it or any one individual would have it and that the, that that where it is sent to that the choice is for them to accept it or not you see this can be the hard part for lots of people is to not create the outcome because then it is as you would have it it goes back to that it cannot be so that we send the enlightenment it will be taken or not but what we do know is that as the enlightenment flows through that cloth of creation the energetic itself it enlivens all it enlightens all not again as any individual would have it but simply be for one simple reason the light shines on all and so in this way for those 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 groups as we've heard so much in the news this this group called ISIS and these other people who are doing these these things we seek not to destroy we seek not to bring harm we seek no violence we simply ask that enlightenment be brought and it is for them to accept as they will or not but we know that we are one and it is through that enlightenment all life flourishes thrives and this is what we can do so we know this and we know too as warriors of light we are not judges of light we are not the one that bring justice we are simply warriors of light so as we are guided to do so those who we have been told we have been received the guidance to bring them to justice we do this to higher sacred justice 
It is not for us to judge. It is not for us to be any of that. Simply, we are the warriors of light. The praise goes to the sacred ones of light. I am content with respect. That's all. So together we can do this. You see? And another thing that I have noted is so much in the news is this this pestilence, Ebola. What is that about? Why is this so, so? Why do we see this? You see, again, as we see, perceive it the energetic, we see these strands flowing. What is not intact? What does it all come down to? What is it about? And sometimes it is not important that we know what it is about, but simply that we intuit, we perceive, this is so, this is not. And then the guidance that comes to do as we are guided to do. That's all. You see? Because it is not personal and it never was. So I'm going to ask you one more time for just a moment or so to open the line so anyone can say anything they would like about that. And then we're going to do another journey. So you can open them up. All right. All right. Are we open? Yep. Okay. Anyone have anything they'd like to say about that before we get on with the next journey? You said something about a tool to focus intent. And that's what I was just talking about, enlightenment. Yes. So what would you what what would you like to say any anyone so we can keep this moving? What are you asking? I understand what you're saying about um, ascending the light and and um, anyone that the light shines everywhere and and everyone has a choice to accept it or not. Um, it's, I, I don't understand why that's a tool to focus intent, though. Okay, is that what you're okay. saying? Well, let me get, let me give it to you in this way. <laughs> to help you get, uh, gain a better understanding. Let us say in an everyday situation, in your, ever, in your everyday life, let's say you encounter someone who is throwing out all kinds of negativity, right. every which way. Okay. If your intent within you is enlightenment, no engagement, just pure enlightenment, Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. That, that does affect what is happening. Not as you would have it. That person will still do whatever he or she will do. But the enlightenment is, is present for that person to accept or not. But if you took, if you took on that person's engagement... As, uh, what's going on there? What's his problem? What's this all about? What's the, and all of that, that engages that negativity, even if it isn't what you, it, you, it isn't what you think you are doing. By okay. simply, by simply embodying enlightenment, you become that that vessel of light that shines. I have seen it happen time and time and time again where just by taking that on, just just by, or I should say, just by becoming a visible vessel of light so that enlightenment shines all, all around, the engagement changes. So by that is what I'm talking about, if that makes it clearer. Yes, it does. Thank you. Okay. okay. Anybody else before we move on? 
Okay. What we're going to do is when we move into this next part of the journey is with your intent that, as was just said, and uh, it was Loretta, yes? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. What we're going to do is embody that light, embody the light, become that vessel of light, so that enlightenment through intent, through primal self, is sent everywhere. The light, the light shines on all. And perceive what happens when that is shines is sent through the kepacha itself. This is the real deal, folks. This is the real stuff. This is what makes it makes all the difference in the world. You know, all that you often each and every one of us had said. Boy, I'd really like to do something if I knew a way to do it. Well, you do now. You are actively participating in making the changes that you have have known can be. You're doing it now by being here. That's wonderful. That That's extraordinary. That goes beyond any human language. And I'm going to ask you all right now in this moment, feel that. Do you feel the energetic right now? Yes. Feel it right now. Exciting. What do you got? What do you feel? What do you feel? Excitement. Any of you? Excitement. Mm-hmm. Joy. How about the rest of you? It's bubbly. <laughs> okay. Bubbly works. <laughs> that works. Yeah, How about the rest of you? Stay warm, the vibration. Yeah. I can tell you that I feel what what this vessel feels is we are one. That's the warm, bubbly excitement. We are one. Isn't that extraordinary to know that you're not alone and you never have been and you never will be? This is within you always. It is only when the lower self stories get in the way that we can feel separated. And that's when you can say to your lower self human, stop it, drop it, I got this, step back. Anybody, anything before we move on? Okay. okay you can mute the phones again, please, Joseph. All right. Once again, let us fly with Star Condor. But before we do, as we are on the Pachamama, let Pachamama know your intent. We are one that we travel now on the wings of Star Condor sending intent of enlightenment through the Kepacha. Leaving behind all the lower self doubts and fears and stories. 
sourcing through your primary, higher, perceptual, primal self. Again, flying past your mountains, your oceans, your land, into the sky, past your clouds, the wings of star condors. Perceive the light, those speckles, those sparkles of light that we all are. That is all of us. We who are of the light. This is who we are. See the infinite number of us. Infinite. No number, just infinite. And into the cave, Pacha, let us send through our primal self our intent of enlightenment through the cave, Pacha, itself. Gentle strength. Our primal self takes it and goes with it. Bringing that enlightenment wherever it serves from the most mild to the most strong where it is needed, enlightening, enlightening, enlivening, enlivening, seeding anew, a kapacha. with the light itself. thanks, your gratitude, and gifts of love. Star condor, return now to your physical body, to the clouds, the sky, past the mountains, the waters, the land. Returning now to your physical body in this current physical body in this place and time. Return fully now. Calling on the Pachamama to hold you so that her strength and love runs through your energetic body and your strength and love flows to the Pachamama herself. We are one. moment. Return now to your bodies, fully into your current body, place and time. Joseph, you can open the lines. Yep. And anyone, center and ground, fully be here. Know what you know. The excitement, the warm Lovely excitement. How to bring that actually into the world. Now you can do it through your word, through your actions, through your intent, your thoughts, 
your feelings. And then now through word, what do you now know? What did you see that happened? Anyone? This is Loretta. I uh, perceived that those negative strands, the dark strands coming from Pachamama up to the Cape Pacha were um, the, the, the rays of light on either side of the dark rays twisted around it. And then I, from above, blew the light down into the negative strand to enlighten it. And I went from one to the next to the next with the help of the positiveness coming up from in the same direction, if that's clear, Um, Mm -hmm. twisting around them and then blowing positive. And what I perceived was that this will continue until it has happened to every negative strand that exists. And that even is with, so. Even without my giving it attention. That's and right. then right before you, you brought us back, I all of a sudden I perceived this, like a darker cloud, like a rain cloud came in from the side and stayed on and came down with me as you brought us out of the journey. I don't know what that's all about, but... What did you perceive it to be? Just this rain cloud. Like a... kind of a smoky darkness. Okay, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's negative. No, yeah, it was kind of smoky but and dark, but but didn't seem to have. I mean, I didn't perceive anything really in it. Okay. Well, you know, any seed must be watered. <laughs> okay. And the rains have to do that. Yeah. You know, a thunderstorm it can get awful dark looking. Yeah. And all sorts of things can go on. But then when it's over, we'll look at the look at the Pachamama. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Wonderful. Anybody else? It's Cindy, and I saw the same uh, grid lines or concentric lines I saw before, only this time they were bright white, all of them. Mm-hmm. This is the Kepacha. This is what we all perceive. This is the Kepacha. This is what you saw. It's what you perceived. Yes. Wonderful. Magnificent. You see that there are, in the energetic grid, there is the Sekes. These are the ones that run horizontally, for lack of another way to say this. The Siwas are the ones that run vertical. So when you speak of the light going up, this is what you're seeing. It's the Siwas. This is the star energy itself. So you see the merging of the Siwas and the Seke together. It bring it take it it. it lets the flow move. It merges. It becomes one. So what you've been doing, you have, what you just did is you, you see, we, we assist the star bridges of light. So you have been assisting in making that so. So don't be very surprised, folks. In the next day or so, a few days, you hear news, news, things on the news about things having changed. 
Don't be surprised at all if that should happen. Very real. How about the rest of you? Anything? Any of you? This is Salim. Um, when I envisioned, um, I see the light coming straight down and kind of dispersing like a wave of water, only it wasn't water. It was just the light. And it just kind of opened up. Wonderful. That's the word I'm going to use. I can't use the technical <laughs> term, so I do apologize. But that's how I saw it. Well, what are you apologizing for, Celine? I don't know. Sometimes I feel like my terms are not as everyone else's, so... Well, I can tell you that you you sound very clear to me about the rest of you. Yes, How does you know. Yeah. Okay. See, this is where the lower self wants to get in the way. That way you're doing it wrong. Maybe you didn't do it right. You didn't do it as better as well as the other people. You tell this is when you tell your lower self human, stop it, drop it, I got this. Step aside. <laughs> yes. And yeah. I was Just know what you know. I still got to speak it out, and I take my apology back. <laughs> <laughs> Apologize for your apology. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> you see, this is this is part of even this right here. When when each and every one of us do the everyday human thing, you know, like get up in the morning, step on the cat, you know, <laughs> it, forget to put the coffee grinds in the coffee pot and not understanding why it's not working, you know, <laughs> why didn't the toast come up? I didn't push the lever down. That's why. <laughs> you know, we all do these things, you know. Now, yeah. what do we do with it? We can jump on ourselves and say, you know what, just because you're a stupid person, you know how to no, throw that all away. Got it. Get as grumpy as you want about yourself. Just don't be toxic about it. Okay. You know, see, it's, see the thing, folks, we're going to be human at least for the rest of this life. We can get better at it. Mm-hmm. You know, we can get better at it. That's all. So that when... We do these things instead of getting so rumpled about ourselves. We say, mm, "Did it again? Fell in another hole? Did I?" Okay. All right. I pull myself up, and I'm going to go and walk on a road that doesn't have holes. <laughs> <laughs> and we do that, and that way, there's no toxin in it because there's something about poison when you splash it anywhere, it's going to not only splash everywhere else, it's going to splash back on you. So why be poisonous to yourself or anyone else? No need for it. You know? And that doesn't mean that you have to be, you know, perfect now. That's, that's, the human is what it is. But we get better at it. And in that way, get as angry as you want. Just don't let it be toxic. And remember what anger is. It's a primal sense. It gets you out of danger. It's only when it gets sourced through the lower self stories does it become an emotional, an emotion that's laden with fear. And that's way different than the primal sense that simply gets you out of danger. You know... Some of you know this, some of you don't, but there was a time I lived in the jungle in the Amazon in Peru for some time. And what I noted and what I found, because of the guides that there told me and all, but I found out that the macaws that live there, they mate for life. So if they're somewhere in the jungle and danger is approaching, the one macaw will appear to attack its partner. 
It's not attacking it. It's pushing it out of danger. So where is it? How do we use that in our everyday lives? How do we use that in our everyday lives? Do we let the emotion-laden story turn into an attack of violence, of harm, based in fear? Or do we use that primal sense to get ourselves and all others out of danger? Feel the difference, even now as we're, we're working here at the Energetic. What do you feel right now, even as that's said? Any of you? How would you like to know how to be in your primal senses? That when any of these come up, anger, fear, when they come up, instead of letting them be that emotion-laden story, see it for what it is. It's there to get you out of danger and others to get you out of danger. In that simple change of engagement, that brings the energetic, the cloth of creation, more and more and into an intact state. Do you understand that, folks? Do you see that, perceive that? Yes. Like a caution light, beware. Yep. Stop. Yeah. I mean, each and all of us can look at our lives and see at times when we didn't pay any attention. And later on, when we're, you know, rubbing that bruise <laughs> and holding our head <laughs> and saying, you know, I knew better. I knew I yeah. shouldn't have done that. I just know I shouldn't have done that. Why didn't I listen? Good question. Now, okay. That's all well and fine, but if you keep doing it, then you have to look deeper. Why are you letting the lower self human get in the way? Be the one that's in the driver's seat. This is where you have to take a deep look. You know, there are people who have wanted to come to Peru with us or whatever else we're doing, the workshops, anything we're doing, but they want it to be comfortable. <laughs> they want it to be in their safety, their safe, comfortable, familiar places. So that's what you have to ask yourself. Are you willing to do whatever it takes unconditionally? To step well out of your safety, out of your comfort zone, and step into real life, the primal. Know what you know, and get going. Are you willing to do that? Unconditionally. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. It definitely takes continual awareness, I would think. Mm-hmm. Which is challenging oh, yeah. when you're in the moment. But you see, even let that word challenge out. That's the lower self that's already throwing stuff around you. Just see it for what it is. See, by going through the higher primal perceptual self, you know a thing to be what it is without stories, without points of reference that go back to some past events. It is what it is. And yeah, you know what? There are no graduates. And you know what I often say to people is look up, there's another peak on the mountain. So each and every one of us, we're, we keep going. We keep going. You know, a friend of mine and we often talk about this. We've known each other for many, many years. We've been to Peru together several times. We've been to the high Andes, the sacred mountains together. We were talking about, you know, this can be very hard on the physical body. 
I say to people, where we go, I would say it's breathtaking if there was any breath to take. <laughs> where we go way up there. <laughs> and so it's hard on the physical body. But we both grinned and we both said, and we'll go again tomorrow. We know that. And in truth, folks, we are going again next year. We're going to Apu Salkantai and Apu Al Singate. And it's, it go, it, it, there's no words to explain this. There is no words to explain this. But one could say, well, if it's, cold up there and it's not easy to breathe and it's all so difficult why would you do it huh? come and find out <laughs> so I know that we are coming close to the close of our our journeying tonight so how wow. what, what would you what would you like to do and because we're going to continue to meet on Monday evenings, and we're going to keep working with the Kayapacha. And each and every one of you now, you now know, you have these tools of enlightenment. Now, in your everyday life, when these things come along, now be enlightenment and see how it changes in your life. And I should tell you this. Pay attention to the teeniest, tiniest, smallest, so-called trivial things because that can that very teeny thing can be that very wisp can be the very thing that changes everything so how what else as, as what more would you like us to work with as we work with the kevacha 